The final piece we'll talk about here with actual problems having to do with gravity uh, involves two-dimensional gravitational uh, setups. So imagine that we have four space stations uh, that are in outer space and they, let's see, let's arrange them so they're actually in a square. They're all roughly the same space station. One might be a little bigger, but it's, they're all the same mass. So we're going to say that they all have mass m. <coughs> Uh, and that they are all the same distance away on the outside from each other. So this, this outside distance here is all the same. I'll call it D here, D here, even though it might not look like it. Um, we'll say that the mass of each of them is about 2.5 million kilograms, 2.5 times 10 to the 6 kilograms, and that the distance in between each of them is about 3.2 times 10 to the second uh, kilometers. 3.2 times 10 to the second kilometers. Um, and I want to know what is the gravitational force on any one of them? Because if they're all here, they're all being pulled toward each other, and I want to make sure that they're not going to collapse on each other. So I'm going to label these kind of arbitrarily, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to start by taking a look at object number four. Um, now object four has three other objects pulling on us. So its free body diagram looks something like this. There's the force of gravity from object one. There is the force of gravity from object two. And there is the force of gravity from object three. Um, when we look at these, we know that the force of gravity from object 1 is going to equal the gravitational constant times m1 times m4, right, because we're looking at object 4, divided by the distance between 1 and 4 squared. Similarly, fg2 is going to equal g times m2 times m4 divided by the distance between 2 and 4 squared and then fg3 is equal to g times m3 m4 divided by the distance 3 to 4 squared. Now two of them, this one and this one, we already know everything in there. We know m1, we know m4, we know d14 because those d14 is this distance here, d34 is this distance here, but d24 that's this distance here. And you can figure it out doing some trig, or you can remember that this side, if this is D and this is D, this forms a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this side right here ends up being root 2 times D. Um, so now we can plug some of these things in. We've got FG1 is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th multiplied by both of the masses multiplied together, which is really just the mass squared. So we've got 2.5 times 10 to the sixth squared divided by the distance between them squared, but we have to be in meters, so we're in kilometers right now. So this is going to be 3.2 times 10 to the fifth meters squared. And this is also equal to F g3 uh, because they're the same distance away and so the, then the only one we actually have to calculate in addition is fg2 which is the same numerator 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th times 2.5 times 10 to the 6th squared but now we are going to multiply by the square root of 2 on the bottom so root 2 times 3.2 times 10 to the fifth squared. And when you punch these into your calculator, being very, very cautious and making sure that you are not messing up your exponents because of parentheses, um, we end up getting this value as 4.07 times 10 to the negative, uh, let's see, negative ninth newtons. And this one ends up being 2.05 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. So then, if we go back to our free body diagram, 
we have an upward force of 4.07 times 10 to the negative ninth. We have a sideways force of 4.07 times 10 to the negative ninth. And we have this 45 degree angle force of 2.05 times 10 to the negative ninth. So two is farther away from the rest of them. And so we end up having a smaller force. Now we could create an xy chart and have uh, force from 3 here, 0 force from that one, 0 force and force 1, and then F2x and F2y. But there's a certain symmetry that we see up here in that we have equal poles left and right, or left and up rather, from right and up, rightward from M3, upward from M1 that end up pulling along the 45 degree angle. So it turns out that our net force is going to be along that 45 degree angle. And so we still need to figure out what the net force is. Uh, we end up with net force along there being 2.05 plus the net force between these two. So we're gonna have the square root of 4.07 squared plus 4.07 squared. You can't just add up each of these numbers. You can't just add those up and get 1.02. You have to do this. And when you do that, you get 7.80 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. So the net force on space station number 4 is very small. 7.80 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. It is a tremendously small force. It is so little that it won't affect anything. Now, if we wanted to, we could go through and figure out the net force on one the same way, and two the same way, and three the same way. But we can also take a look and see that it doesn't really matter which of these space stations we looked at. I arbitrarily labeled them one, two, three, four, and I chose four to look at at first. But we see that if we look at one, we get the same exact solution. We're still d away from m2, we're still d away from m4, and we're root 2d away from m3. And so each of the forces on each of the objects is the same because we have both vertical and horizontal and really for that matter rotational symmetry for 90 degrees. So the net force then on each of our objects, F net, is equal to this and we have to make sure we have an angle and this is at 45 degrees toward the center. Toward the center. Right, because it's not really just 45 degrees. It's 45 degrees for this one. It's 135 degrees for this one. It's 225 degrees for this one. And it's uh, 315 degrees for this one. So our net force, as I'm going to show here in red, is pointing always towards the center here for each of the objects. And it pulls there. And it's equal to. 7.80 times 10 to the negative ninth newtons. And that is gravitational force in two dimensions. Now, for this part of the unit, there's really only a few things that you should be able to do now after practicing this and seeing a couple videos. Um, you should be able to use Newton's law of gravitation, NLG, Newton's law of gravitation, to find the force of gravity between any two objects. Uh, any two objects when given their masses and distances between them. So you have to be given their masses and distances between them. You should also be able to use Newton's law of gravitation to relate changes in those objects. So that would be like if we took the radius and we cut it in half or we doubled the mass. This is what happens. You should be able to use Newton's law of gravitation to find the acceleration due to gravity on any planet or because of any object. And you should be able to use Newton's law of gravitation to find the net force, F net, on any object. That would be like the space station example um, 
or no, sorry, that would not be the space station. That would be like looking at the moon and earth example. Um, and finally, you should be able to use Newton's law of gravitation to find the net force in two dimensions. Those are the five things you should be able to do after this unit. Hopefully you are.